The Imperial Stormtrooper is simply iconic. They're the very first enemies we see in the Star Wars universe, making way for Darth Vader as they take over the Tantive IV. Despite the mockery of their terrible aim in the decades since, we've still been introduced to several elite and specialized Stormtrooper variants. After how much love you showed our video on the elite Clone Trooper variants, we felt it necessary to today bring you every single Imperial Stormtrooper type and variant explained. Before we begin, some quick clarification. To keep things focused and concise, we'll only be touching on Imperial Troopers. Other Imperials, such as Officers, Admirals, Mandalorian Commandos, and Royal Guards, don't make the cut. And since we recently covered the clones, we'll stick to troopers that served the Galactic Empire. We begin with the standard Imperial Stormtrooper. These elite, obedient, and zealous soldiers wore armor consisting of white plastoid plates over a black body glove, and their standard weapon was the E-11 medium blaster rifle. Red and orange pauldrons were often worn by Stormtrooper commanders, tasked with leading their squadrons. Though a single clone trooper was undeniably more effective than a stormtrooper, the recruitment and conscription of non-clone soldiers was far more cost-effective. Emperor Palpatine was also more concerned with endless numbers than skilled soldiers at this point in galactic history. Elite squad troopers were among the first conscripted non-clone soldiers for the Empire's future stormtrooper corps. Four of these troopers served under Crosshair, after the remainder of the Bad Batch deserted, though he'd later kill all four of them with a single shot. Their weapons and armor were identical to that of Phase Two clone troopers, though the latter was given a black paint job and green helmet visor. TK stormtroopers marked the first mass wave of the Empire's non-clone soldiers. They wore prototype stormtrooper armor, which was actually based on Ralph McQuarrie concept art from the original trilogy, serving as the transition from Phase Two clone armor to the infamous Stormtrooper kit. TK troopers were trained by clone commandos as a part of Imperial Project War Mantle. Heavy weapon stormtroopers were specially trained troopers armed with large rapid-fire blasters like the DLT-19, which could level anything in their path. They usually wore black pauldrons. Rocket stormtroopers were fairly similar, though they were equipped with missile launchers such as the RPS-6. They were trained to eliminate insurgent activity, diminish uprisings, and quell dissent, providing ground support. Though effective, their weapons required them to reload after each shot, leaving them vulnerable. Their pauldrons were typically red. Sand troopers are the first variant which specialized in a specific environment. Trained for desert operations, sand troopers served the interests of the Galactic Empire on planets like Tatooine. The armor used by sand troopers was augmented with cooling fans and a helmet sand filter. In addition, they wore a survival backpack stocked with extra rations and water. They most commonly wore orange and black pauldrons and were equipped with heavier weapons. Some even rode on dewbacks, reptiles native to Tatooine. Space troopers were equipped to operate in zero-g environments. They wore a variant of the stormtrooper armor fitted with a rebreather pack. These Stormtrooper variants were known to be present aboard Thrawn's flagship, the Chimera, and patrolled the outside of the Death Star. Scout Troopers were used on a range of missions which mostly involved reconnaissance. In particular, Scout Troopers often rode speeder bikes or served as snipers. They had lighter armor than standard Troopers, allowing for better maneuverability. Two sub-variants of the Scout Trooper also exist in canon. Forest Troopers, which wore a camouflaged Scout Trooper armor on Kashyyyk, as well as Cave Troopers that were equipped with low-light vision gear to help them see in darkness and repelling cables. The Patrol Trooper was essentially the urbanized version of the Scout Trooper. They acted as a rapid response police force on worlds like Corellia. As the Empire reinforced its hold on planets across the galaxy, local defense forces were being supplemented and eventually completely replaced by stormtroopers. To cover distances across sprawling settlements and cities, patrol troopers policed the streets aboard their swift speeder bikes. Shock troopers, which carried over from the days of the Republic, formed the Coruscant Guard. Noted for their distinctive red and white armor, they supplemented the Senate Guard as bodyguards for Senators, Emperor Palpatine, and other officials. They also specialized in guarding prisons, maintaining civil order as anti-riot police officers, and escorting diplomats for off-world assignments. Flame Troopers were equipped with incendiary weapons. They were deployed to Kashyyyk and defended Imperial facilities against native fauna. 
Their armor was similar to snow troopers and clone flame troopers. Incinerator troopers fulfilled the same role by the time of Moff Gideon's Imperial Remnant. The troopers received intense fire combat training and wore armor closer to that of a shock trooper, though it also had a special coating applied to protect against the heat of their weapons. The difference between flame troopers and incinerator troopers is unknown, though many theorize flame troopers were more suited to clearing flora and fauna, while incinerators were meant for live combat. Jump troopers were equipped with jetpacks that granted them temporary flight. They could also carry burst shields and rocket launchers. Jump troopers had specialized helmets with breathing tubes and orange shoulder pads. Artillery stormtroopers specialized in indirect fire weapons such as mortars while in the battlefield. They launched explosives of different types to fall at precisely calculated coordinates from cover. Their armor was similar to the incinerator troopers with yellow markings instead of red. Snow troopers were trained to operate in the frigid tundra of planets like Hoth. Snow trooper armor was well insulated to protect against the extreme cold with a heated suit and breather mask. AT-AT pilots were also seen on Hoth, driving the massive four-legged walkers. Working in groups of two, they operated the walkers driving and firing controls, and were, in certain cases, overseen by a commander who also occupied the walker's cockpit. The suits were designed to protect the wearer if the AT-AT's pressurized cockpit was compromised. TIE pilots served in the Starfighter Corps by flying the various twin ion engine ships, Within the Imperial forces, they were often referred to as coffin jockeys due to the high mortality rate of those manning the vulnerable TIE fighters. Their uniforms were similar to AT-AT pilots, but were black and contained a life support chest piece. Special Forces troopers wore almost identical armor to TIE pilots. They were highly trained soldiers who specialized in infiltration, extraction, and combat in various types of environments, and served within the Imperial Special Forces. One such unit was Inferno Squad, under the lead of Iden Versio. Range troopers were some of the toughest in the Imperial military, and viewed other forces as soft amateurs. Seen on Vandor in Solo A Star Wars Story, range troopers wore heavy armor with fur and were equipped with magnetic boots, which allowed them sure footing atop fast-moving vehicles. Shore troopers were trained and equipped for combat in tropical coastal environments, such as Scarif, Morak, and Niamos. Shore troopers operated under the command of sergeants, leading squads of standard stormtroopers. The position they served in was temporary and subject to change along with their rank. Their unique sand-colored armor featured various colored stripes which indicated a shore trooper's rank. Although their armor had more capabilities than standard stormtrooper armor, it proved to be no stronger. Sea troopers were used to maintain a presence on the many aquatic worlds under the Empire's rule, such as Mon Cala. The sea trooper's armor was pressure sealed and included a rebreather that allowed a user to stay underwater for extended periods of time. It also featured a black mounted propulsion unit, propulsion boots, and flippers. The sea troopers carried a blaster rifle spear gun hybrid as a standard weapon. Swamp troopers or mud troopers were a lesser infantry unit that technically existed outside of the stormtrooper corps. Imperial naval cadets deemed to be insubordinate, such as a young Han Solo, were often reassigned to infantry duty as swamp troopers. Due to often hazardous nature of the various worlds the Empire found itself subjugating, swamp troopers wore goggles for eye protection and oxygen masks to filter out potentially deadly substances, although many swamp troopers did not always wear their masks during battle. Wet weather gear stormtroopers fought alongside the swamp troopers on Mimban. Compared to standard stormtrooper armor, theirs had additional space between plates at the shoulders, hips, and knees, allowing for a greater range of movement. They also wore waterproof capes. Dark troopers were experimental combat droids that were at one point bodysuits worn by human pilots. Dark troopers were first introduced in the Star Wars Legends continuity in the video game Star Wars Dark Forces, which is actually getting a remaster pretty soon. As such, their Legends history is far more complicated with phases 0 through 3 of Dark Troopers. We made a separate video all about the evolution of the Dark Trooper that we'll link in the description or end screen of this video. Purge Troopers were utilized by the Inquisitorious as special forces and expendable death squads. The first Purge Troopers were actually the last generation of clone troopers, but later their ranks consisted of human recruits. Purge Troopers were few in number and kept out of the public eye, with most citizens unaware they even existed. The original iteration of the Purge Trooper armor was similar to that of clone paratroopers before switching to a Phase 2 design 
that more resembled standard stormtroopers. Some perch troopers carried blasters, while others utilized electrostaffs, electrobatons, or electrohammers. Death troopers specialized in stealth, espionage, and lethality. They acted as a protective detail for significant Imperial officers, as well as special assignment commandos. They wore black suits of body armor and specialized helmets with vocal scramblers, micro-motion sensors, and heads-up displays with data on enemy and friendly positions on the battlefield. Death troopers were trained in unarmed combat, heavy weapons, demolitions, improvised weaponry, guerrilla warfare, and marksmanship. Experts at covering their tracks, death troopers left little to no evidence of their missions. Shadow troopers also wore distinguishing black suits of experimental armor, although much closer to that of a standard stormtrooper, however bolstered with a portable cloaking device, rendering them almost completely invisible and highly suited for stealth missions. The specialized soldiers overwhelmed their enemies by attacking in hordes, using a range of blaster rifles as well as flash grenades and sometimes jetpacks. Lava troopers were stationed at Fortress Vader on Mustafar. They were equipped with some sort of breathing apparatus to filter out volcanic ash and gases. Magma troopers were incredibly similar to lava troopers, though their armor was white and had extra plating to withstand extremely high temperatures, incorporating extra armor on the legs. Like the lava troopers, they were stationed on Mustafar, but also fought on other volcanic worlds like Sullust. Scar Troopers, or Special Commando Advanced Recon Troopers, were afforded an unusual degree of autonomy and were deployed in small squads led by a sergeant. One such unit was Task Force 99, which consisted of a squad of Scar Troopers led by the lightsaber-wielding Sergeant Creel. Each member of a unit specialized in different tactics. These guys were basically the Empire's Bad Batch in the still canon 2015 comics. Tank Troopers, ATACT pilots, and Juggernaut pilots can all pretty much be grouped together. Their armor was all fairly similar to Mud Troopers and Shore Troopers, with their own unique helmets and color schemes. These troopers were all specially trained to operate their corresponding vehicles. These troopers were also used as light infantry, trained for recon, and skirmishes. Imperial combat drivers served basically the same purpose. Standard combat drivers were trained to handle everything in the Imperial ground arsenal. Their armor was much closer to that of Imperial cadets. Riot control stormtroopers acted as a security force tasked with the dispersion and arrest of insurgents taking part in disruptive activities. They used electrobatons and riot shields, wearing either stormtrooper or scout trooper armor, depending on their deployment. Stormtrooper grenadiers were equipped with grenade launchers. They wore a red pauldron and a black bandolier across their chest. Finally, we must give a special nod to two other lesser troopers considered canon. First, the Crimson Trooper, which is said to be similar to Magma Troopers, though their only appearance to date has been in action figure form. Finally, the Storm Commandos, special forces scout troopers who appeared in a mobile game. But which Stormtrooper class covered in today's video is your favorite? Which army's classes should we cover next? Mandalorians? Battle droids? Let us know what you think down in the comments. Come join us to chat more at our community Discord server linked in the description. If you enjoyed today's Star Wars video, we've got more on the screen for you right now. Also make sure to drop a like, and if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe to join the Red Squadron. Until next time, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you. Red 5, standing by.